Well, it looks like we're going to have a strong El Nino this year, and your first thought might go to heavy rainfall with widespread flooding, maybe large waves crashing into piers. But that begs the question, is El Nino associated with more rainfall for California and the Central Coast? Before we can answer that question, you might be wondering, what is El Nino? Well, in a normal year, we have strong trade winds that blow a lot of the warm surface water to the western Pacific, and then we have cold upwelling on the eastern Pacific. That leads to more rising motion in the west and more rainfall, and then more descending motion and typically drier conditions on the eastern Pacific. Now, during an El Nino year, those trade winds aren't as strong, so some of that warm surface water rushes back, and then we typically see above average rainfall. Now, this year, we are seeing those warm surface waters rush back to the eastern Pacific. So we are overall expecting it to be a rainy winter. And you can see that on an average El Nino, much of the west coast does see above average rainfall. But it turns out that it depends on how intense the El Nino is. So if you look at some of the weak El Ninos that we've had over the last 50 to 80 years, much of Northern California and stretching down into the Central Valley actually ends up being drier than normal. But then if you go up to a moderate El Nino, that's where you start to see some of the above average precipitation. Something interesting happens with strong El Ninos, which is the kind of event that we're expecting this year. On average, Northern California ends up being drier, whereas Southern California ends up seeing a bit more rainfall than a normal year. And then the most interesting feature is during very strong El Ninos, that's where basically the entire west coast of the United States sees well above average rainfall. So the basic summary there is the intensity of the El Nino event determines how much rainfall you're typically going to see. So in a weak event, you actually end up seeing 94% of your average rainfall, so it's a dry year. But then as you increase in intensity to a very strong year, you end up seeing 150% of your normal rain. Now what we're expecting this year is a strong event, which is right around average. So what we can do is actually dive into some of the specific individual years that we've had in the past that had strong El Ninos, and also zero in on the Central Coast. The first strong El Nino event that we're going to look at is 1972 to 1973. And as you can see, all of the central coast is in dark blue, which represents well above average precipitation. But when we look at the next event, which is 1987 to 1988, almost all of California is in the red, which means it ended up being a very dry year. Now the last strong El Nino event we'll look at is 1991 to 1992. And this one's interesting because Northern California ended up being drier than average. Southern California was above average. And then the Central Coast saw just about as much rainfall as what you would expect. So the basic summary there is El Nino isn't as good of a predictor for rainfall as you might hope. Now with that being said, given El Nino and a lot of different factors, we are still expecting slightly above average rainfall for the Central Coast this winter. But for that, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. For KSBW Action News 8, I'm Holt Hanley.